Hey, now we are starting. This is uh, F2, so lucky us, we get a look at uh, fats and oils now. So F2 is focusing in on fats and oils. So what we did in uh, F1 um, for food chemistry, IB food chemistry, is we just looked at what, a, what is a food, what is a nutrient. Then we looked at kind of uh, fats, uh, carbohydrates, and proteins, just basic, basic um, definitions of those. And now we're going to go on to look at uh, fats oils in a little bit more detail here. So what we need to do is define between what's a, a saturated and an unsaturated fatty acid. Um, and we kind of already looked at this before a little bit in F1 is right here. This is the big thing. That double bond. That double bond makes it unsaturated. When you have an unsaturated fat, you have a place for that fat to react with things. Like, like we've said in um, Back in organic chemistry, double bonds are just sources of places where things can react. There are extra electrons that things are going to come in and attack. So an unsaturated bond is an acid or a fatty acid that has double bonds in it. If we have a fully saturated fat, well, that saturated fat is going to have um, single bonds. So notice when they're saturated, they're saturated like it says with hydrogen. Unsaturated have double bonds, um, and so on. So a lot of text on this page, and I apologize for that. You don't necessarily need to go read them all through. Um, but what we want to do is we want to predict the degree of crystallization. What that is just telling us is if we're predicting the degree of crystallization, we're predicting whether our fats are going to be um, solids or whether they're going to be liquids. Um, we're going to predict whether they're going to have high melting points or low melting points and, and why this is important in the home and also in your industry. Well, what what we can say is that the more saturated the fat is, the more likely that fat is to be a, a solid. So solid fats um, are, tend to be more crystalline, I, I guess is the word that they use, but our saturated fats tend to be solids. Um, notice when it says we have unsaturated fats, unsaturated fats tend to be liquids. So saturated fats tend to be solids at room temperature, unsaturated fats tend to be liquids. So when you hear about saturated fats or, or, or saturating fats, what they do a lot of times is like margarine is a, is a saturated fat. And they do that to make that liquid a solid. Because solids we are, have a lot of uh, benefit. If we have solids like shortening, um, oh, it's just easier to transport, it's easier to store um, than having a liquid. So notice some of these saturated fats, um, like butter, are, are natural saturated fats. Um, some of them are, are unnatural. So if you make margarine, that is taking an oil, one of the oils, and saturating it by pumping in hydrogen gas, just like we looked at in the organic chemistry chapter. So one more time, one more time so we get what's important here. Unsaturated fats uh, tend to be liquids, right? Saturated fats tend to be solids at room temperature. Okay, let's look at the rest of the things we have on this page. And the rest of it says that the melting point of our fatty acids actually goes up with molecular mass. So that should make sense. So as we go from, say, C8H, um, I guess we have, we're, we're talking about fats, right? So let me try that again. As we go from, say, I don't know, what, c 8 COOH, so this is one fatty acid to up to C20, COOH. Well, it's just a bigger, longer structure, so it's more likely um, to be a, a solid, and it's going to have a higher and higher melting point as that molecular structure gets bigger and bigger and bigger, which, again, is something that we know from organic chemistry, so it's not, hopefully, not really a surprise. Um, notice what these are chosen for, then. Um, Typically, fats and oils are chosen for cooking on the basis of their melting temperature. So we want our fats and oils to melt easily so they can cook our food. If they have a really, really high melting point and they stay a solid, well, that's not going to be very good if we're trying to cook our food because we're going to burn our food before our, um, our butter or our margarine melts and able to cook our food. So notice, for example, cocoa butter melts close to body temperature, so nice low, low um, melting temperature. Fats chosen for cake melting melt over a wide variety, depending, again, um, what type of cake and how much you want it. Don't necessarily want all of our, all of our fats to melt at very low temperatures. Um, notice this is kind of a 
higher level point here. If we have cis fatty acids, well, cis means all the hydrogen atoms are on the same side of the double bond, um, and those tend to have lower melting points than the trans fatty acids. So uh, a little side point here, maybe if we can delete some stuff, we'll make some room. So if we have a cis compound, let's draw out our cis compound here. So cis means you have the double bond, the things on the same side, as opposed to our trans. And what does it say about our cis? Our cis have lower melting points. Our trans fats, trans fats tend to stick together and have higher melting points. So they have these um, structures that can kind of stack. These things, unfortunately, um, or I don't know if it's unfortunate or not, but if they're cis, if they're both in the same direction, they kind of, they don't stack as well on top of each other. There's kind of space in here um, between these atoms, and so they actually have lowered melting points because of that, which again is something that we looked at at higher level organics, so something that we should kind of recognize in the back of our head. So if we have um, compounds that can stack really easily, they kind of stick together, they're going to have a slightly elevated melting point as opposed to things that are cis in this case. Okay, so if we look at the stability then of our saturated and our unsaturated fats, notice our saturated fats tend to be more stable than our unsaturated fats. Um, now, why do they? Well, a couple of things. One, if we have a saturated fat, notice these have no double bonds in them. Our lines can lie nice flat together. They can kind of stick together. When they stick together like that, we have these elevated melting points and so it's more likely to be a solid. And when we have those unsaturated fats, notice we must have double bonds. And when we have double bonds, then we're going to have bends kind of in these long, fatty chains. And when we have those bends, well, again, we lower the melting point, and they're more likely to be liquids. That's what we've already said. But also, when we have unsaturated fats, those unsaturated fats can react with things, right? Because double bonds are a source of reaction. We know that from organic chemistry. So they can oxidize, react with the oxygen in the air, they can react with hydrogen, go through hydrogenation, they are more likely to write, react with light through photooxidation, so light-induced oxidation, or ultraviolet light-induced oxidation, and react with enzymes, heat, water, any of that stuff. Basically, <laughs> we don't need to worry about all the individual terminology here, because there's a lot of terminology, oxidation, hydrogenation, photo-induced oxidation, and hydrolysis. What we really need to worry about is if we have a double bond, there's a place for a reaction to occur. They are less stable um, because they're more reactive. And then double bond, you can react with stuff. That's no surprise. So as you know, then, what they do is often um, our, uh, our unsaturated fats will go through the process of hydrogenation, Will, uh, will hydrogenate those unsaturated fats. Okay, so how is that done? The process is adding hydrogen to that carbon-carbon double bond. Okay, so they have a little bit of heat, not a ton of heat, 140 to 225, that's not a ton. They have a metal catalyst, um, and they add hydrogen gas. Now, what is that going to do? Well, notice if we hydro add hydrogen gas across this double bond, that breaks that double bond. Now we have hydrogens there, and now we have a saturated fat. Now, what has that done to us? Well, it's, it's um, raised the melting point, so it's more likely to be a solid, right? But notice um, when we have saturated fatty acids, they're less prone to rancidification. Wow, that's a cool word, rancidification. What that means is they're less likely to go bad. They're going to last longer. So our solid um, hydrogenated uh, fatty acids are, are just going to last longer. They're going to be solids. They're not going to react as easily. Um, this is how we get margarine from vegetable oils, and they do, they, they are, uh, they, basically they last longer. It's a way to preserve these vegetable oils. So for all the scary stuff, you might have heard about saturated fats. Um, and health is kind of a different topic that we'll talk about. Right now, we're just talking about the stability and why they do it. They are more stable. They do have a, a higher melting point. So the reason that they go through hydrogenation, the reason that we saturate our unsaturated fats is to lower the risk of rancidification, right? To make them more useful, make them last longer. Um, and it turns, again, vegetable oils into margarine. So now what we want to do last is, is discuss these advantages and disadvantages. So let's discuss. Anybody have any questions? Okay, good. So does it, that will end our discussion. Um, I think we're all in the greens. Okay, I suppose we can, we can have a discussion. So why do they saturate fats? Well, again, they saturate fats to make the melting point like that of a saturated fat, which means make it more likely a solid, and raise the melting point. That is why they saturate uh, vegetable oils. That's why they saturate those fats and make... Um, 
make margins out of them. It makes them much less reactive to oxidation, much less likely to go to, through rancidification, makes them harder. Again, it makes them easier to transport, easier to store if we have solids. Disadvantage, well, they're not as healthy for you. Okay, and we'll talk about why here uh, a little bit. Um, well, it, it says why right down here. Once they're saturated fats, well, our saturated fats, especially trans-saturated fats, are harder for your body to break down. So they accumulate in your body. So we get this fat that your body can't, can't really break down as easily, as used for energy as easily, and so it can build up in your body. body. So if we have these trans-fatty acids um, that are made through um, solidification or hydrogenation of these unsaturated fats, well, then we have these fat molecules in our body that our body can't use very well. Um, not like maybe more natural fat sources. So these um, unnatural saturated fats, very difficult for our body to break down. So very low quality energy source because it takes, it, it's very, uh, like I said, for the, what, fourth, fifth time now, they're hard for your body to break down. So they're more stable, they last longer, we can preserve the food, easier to transport, all of that, but they're not healthy for you because now that they're saturated, right, they're hard for your body to break down.